Here they are folks, Sony's new WF-1000X Mark IV noise canceling earbuds. They're not cheap at $280, that's $50 more than the previous model, but you know what? They're really damn good, so let's get right into the review and find out how they stack up against the best true wireless noise canceling earbuds out there right now. As you can see, they're totally different looking than the Mark III, and that goes for the packaging as well. Like a lot of other companies, Sony has moved to simple, eco-friendly packaging, and I appreciated that. All those little complaints about the previous model, that they stuck out of your ears too much, the case was a little big, there was no water resistance, and that headset performance for making calls just wasn't as good as it should be. Well, Sony made a list of all those gripes and basically went down the list and crossed them off or at least most of them anyway. These have a more traditional earbud design, and while they certainly aren't small buds, they're a good deal smaller than the Mark III's, and they fit my ears snugly and securely. They also stayed in my ears when I ran with them, and yes, they're splash-proof with an IPX4 water resistance rating, so you can sweat on them without worrying that you're gonna ruin them. All that said, I could see some people with smaller ears who might have a little trouble with them. Uh, can't guarantee they're gonna fit everyone equally well, but they did fit my ear as well. The one thing I was a little unsure about was the look of the buds. They've got this little copper colored ring that's their signature design trait, but there's something a little funky about it and slightly jarring. I think I would have preferred if the buds were all one color, but that's a minor gripe on my part and your aesthetic sensibilities may be completely the opposite of mine. What is that copper ring? Well, it's a microphone and there are two microphones on each bud, one of which is beam forming to pick up your voice better. On top of that, these have bone conduction sensors that detect when you're talking during calls and the buds have the same speak to chat feature found on Sony's over-ear WH-1000X Mark IV headphones. If you're listening to music and someone comes up to you, if you say anything, you know, like, hey, what's up? Your music automatically pauses and the earbuds go into an ambient sound mode that allows you to hear the outside world and the person you're having a conversation with. The music then resumes a few seconds after you stop talking and that noise canceling that you had on before will kick back in. Um, and like the previous model, you can also tap and hold on the left bud to manually pause your music and go into that ambient sound mode. So you don't have to use the speak to chat, you can turn it off, which is probably a good idea if you're someone who talks to yourself a lot or happens to sing along to the songs you're listening to. Before I get into how good the noise canceling and sound quality are, I'll say that Sony has really improved the headset performance for making calls. The noise reduction during calls is a lot better and people said they could hear me well even in the noisy streets of New York. I test call quality by standing in the street with cars driving behind me and these measure up well to the AirPods Pro. Maybe they're not quite their equal, but they're close. So the voice calling capabilities of these earbuds have definitely improved. The noise canceling is quite impressive right at the top of the class. It's definitely improved from the Mark III and it's right there with the Bose QuietComfort earbuds, which cost the same as these and were previously best in class for true wireless noise canceling. Sony says the WF-1000X Mark IV has a new custom chipset called the V1 that processes both sound and noise canceling, and it appears to have made a big difference, particularly for noise canceling. I didn't travel on a plane, but I have a noisy HVAC unit in my apartment, and I compared the noise canceling of these to the Bose, and they were very close in terms of their muffling abilities. Both are really quite impressive. I thought these also did a good job muffling noise outside in the streets and even did well tamping down sound when I was watching an NBA playoff game in my home theater with the volume fairly high. So the noise canceling seems to work across a wider range of frequencies than it did with the Mark III. As with all of these types of noise isolating earbuds to get optimal noise canceling performance and the best possible sound, you do need to get a tight seal. To that end, Sony has redesigned its ear tips and includes three sizes of foam ear tips instead of silicone tips. They have kind of a polyurethane coating to them, so they're a little bit more durable than your typical foam tips. 
and the large tips fit my ears well. I was able to get a good seal according to the seal test in the app, but I still decided to use a set of silicone tips I had that ended up fitting my ears perfectly, but most of you should be able to get a good seal from the included tips. Along with shrinking the size of the buds, Sony also shrunk the size of the charging case. It's about 40% smaller. You can now stand it up. It has a flat bottom and you get both USB-C and wireless charging. Battery life is rated at eight hours with noise canceling on at moderate volume levels and up to 12 hours with it off. The charging case holds an additional 16 hours of juice. That eight hours of battery life with ANC on is better than what you get with a lot of noise canceling earbuds, including the AirPods Pro, which are at about five hours. I'm not gonna dig into all the features in the app. There are some adaptive sound modes, plenty of equalizer settings, and you can customize the touch controls to your liking and add volume controls to the mix if you want. You can also choose whether to use Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, or your phone's native voice assistant. And as you might expect, these can play tracks recorded in Sony's 360 reality audio format, which is supported by some streaming music services like Deezer and Tidal. These are equipped with Bluetooth 5.2 and also have support for Sony's high resolution LDAC wireless streaming audio codec. Some Sony devices and Amazon Music HD, Quobuzz, Tidal, and Nugsnet music services support LDAC streaming. I used an Android device to stream LDAC with Quobuzz and I did notice a very slight difference in sound quality for the better. Alas, Apple devices don't support LDAC. And for those of you looking to pair these with your Aptex enabled Android devices, Aptex isn't supported. The majority of people will simply use the default AAC audio codec for wireless Bluetooth streaming to their iOS or Android smartphone or tablet. Sorry if I bored you with all that technical audio codec stuff, but there's always a few commenters who complain if I don't mention it, so I do. More importantly, I should point out that unlike Sony's WH-1000X Mark IV over-ear headphones, these don't have multi-point Bluetooth pairing, so you can't pair them with two devices simultaneously, like with a PC and a smartphone, and automatically switch the audio when a call comes in, and that's really the only missing feature that stood out to me anyway. As far as the sound goes, not surprisingly, it's really good. Nice detail, warm but well-defined bass that goes deep, natural sounding mids where vocals live, and just big open sound for true wireless buds anyway. Along with that new V1 chip for digital processing, Sony has redesigned the six millimeter drivers, and these do sound richer than the Mark III's, which already sounded excellent. For me anyway, the traits of an excellent sounding wireless headphone involve such adjectives as accurate, articulate, well-balanced, dynamic, and smooth. These exhibit those traits, though I don't want to oversell them too much because they are true wireless earbuds after all, and not wired headphones. But for true wireless, their sound is up there with the best sounding models, including Bowers & Wilkins' new $400 PI7, Sennheiser's $250 Momentum True Wireless 2, and Master & Dynamics $300 MW08. Needless to say, they easily outclass the AirPods Pro in the sound department, though the AirPods Pro are lighter and overall more comfortable to wear. I do like the Bose QuietComfort earbuds sound, but these offer a little bit more refined, richer sound. Some people, including me, like how the Bose's Stay ear tips fit their ears, but in most other regards, these Sonys have the edge with a smaller design for both the buds and the case, better headset performance and slightly better sound. And as I said, they're very close as far as noise canceling goes. No earbuds are totally perfect, of course, and not everybody will love the fit of the WF-1000X Mark IV Buds or be able to afford their high price. But if you're looking for great sounding earbuds with great noise canceling, solid voice calling capabilities, and good battery life, these buds check all the boxes. As always, let me know what you think in the comments section. And if you found this video informative at all, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm David Carney for CNET. Thanks for watching.